Hi guys, I'm Amy Wadsworth of 804 Sycamore, and today's video is going to be about loading shelves on these alcoves. I have an alcove on each side of the fireplace, and we left them empty when we built the house because we knew that I was going to go back in and build them myself um, for much cheaper, and I would get the exact stain on them that I wanted. And I also know how heavy of items I'm putting on the shelves and how sturdy I need them to be. So please hit that like and subscribe button and let's get going. Okay guys, so the first step is to go ahead and measure out and draw your lines. I just used a level um, to draw my lines and I decided to go 17 inches in between each shelf. It was the, um, the perfect space to avoid that light switch there that you can see and then all the media stuff, um, the plugins and then the little fireplace um, port. So anyways, uh, consider that when you're deciding on the depth as well as decor and just a, an aesthetically accurate bookshelf height. You don't want them too wide or too narrow, um, something in the middle. So mine are 17. So the first step is to measure the width of the back of the wall. Um, it, mine's approximately four feet, um, give or take. And so I used two by threes and I um, measured it, cut it, and then I even marked um, each one, like one through five, um, to indicate all five shelf brackets. So um, what you just saw me doing is marking the spots where there are studs. So. Um, I held the bracket up to the wall and then I used a pencil to mark the studs. This back bracket will be screwed into the wall um, directly into the studs. So I'm drilling my pocket holes so that I can drill my four inch screws um, into the studs. Now these are my shorter pieces. Um, again, the, the depth of your shelves will really depend on um, if you have any light switches or, or outlets. Um, I did not come all the way out to the wall. I thought it looked better a little um, bit uh, recessed, um, but these you're gonna drill the pocket holes for, in my case, uh, four vertical brackets. Um, I did a bracket per foot and my um, width is about four feet. So I did two pocket holes in each one and then these will be, a, you'll see um, in just a second how the brackets come out. So um, for this bracket, I have each piece laid out um, and I haven't, I'm just going to attach and um, connect the two center brackets. Um, and you want to make sure that you're not placing the brackets where you need to um, attach the whole bracket to the studs. And so it doesn't have to be um, perfectly symmetrical just avoid where you're attaching it directly to the wall um, and then I use two um, Craig screws to attach these brackets um, for the outside ones my walls actually curved in so the front of the shelf is shorter than the back of the shelf and so after um, after I set my bracket in then I then I just held the board on there marked it because if I attached it to the outside outside um, it would totally scratch up my sheetrock. So anyways, I had to attach the outside brackets later. Okay, so here you can see the brackets um, halfway done and you notice that the side pieces aren't in yet. Um, that's because what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the bracket level double check my studs, use four inch screws, wood screws, and then once I have the back bracket, the backboard in place, then I can go ahead and add the far right side and the far left side. And I'll attach those to that backboard um, and then I'll attach them into the side, the studs in the side walls. Um, so it helps so much to have a helper. There's no way I could hold this in place, um, keep it level and screw it in. I'm just not strong enough. So um, if you can find a helper, 
um, that would be awesome. My DeWalt screw gun, drill gun, is awesome. It was really powerful, really smooth. Um, highly recommend this tool. Um, I loved it. So you can see um, on the top bracket, I'm not sure if you can see, but there's only one screw going into the sides. Um, but these are really secure. So here's the side bracket. Um, once I put in the pocket screws and got it connected, now I'm making sure it's level. And you can see I pre-drilled to go directly into the stud. Um, and so once it's level, you can just get it attached into the stud and it's very strong and it's very secure. For this um, part, I um, drilled it as far as I could and then I realized I needed to add a particular attachment to um, get all the way through that 2x3 and um, get it really drilled in. So um, this little, this skinny attachment is super helpful and I was able to get the screw all the way in and totally secure. Now that all your brackets are um, installed and into the studs, it's time to add the um, half inch plywood. I started out with quarter inch and it was just way too flimsy. So the half inch was a, a way better fit for me. It still left me with nice sleek modern shelves, but um, they're very sturdy. So this is called scribing and this is what you do when your walls aren't square, which is almost every single house, even new construction like mine. Um, and here's a close up, you can see how much wider of a cut because the wall does curve in. So once you scribe the right side and you cut it, you're gonna want to measure because you don't want to, you don't want to scribe too much. Um, so I know that I want my shelves to be 18 inches deep. And so I marked that spot. Um, and then I also looked at my measurements for how wide that particular shelf is because every shelf was just a little bit different. Um, so each shelf is, eight, I'm marking the 18 inch deep and it's, you know, a little bit over 47 inches. That way when I scribe the other side, I don't take off too much. So I just used my clamps um, in this little handy setup with my saw horses and I just used my DeWalt um, jigsaw because I the the wall literally curves and the jigsaw allows me to get that intricate cut and get it where get the get the curve um, of the natural wall because I don't want a big gap um, you know I'm not going to fill it with caulk I, I don't think that would look that great um, it is an option but it's it wasn't an option for me so um, the jigsaw was the saw for this particular job. Okay, so once you have all 10 pieces of plywood cut, that's right, you, you're going to scribe every single top shelf, and then I did not scribe underneath, I figured it was close enough. So after all 10 boards were cut, then I measured the front face. And this is a, a nice finish board that's going to go across the top and I'm measuring each one, and then I'm going to go out and measure and cut all of them in a row. And then I also marked uh, numbers one through five so that I knew which front face goes to which shelf. So it took me a while to kind of um, figure out the meter saw. Um, I would often, um, think I measured and marked correctly and then it would be too short or it'd be too long. So my rule of thumb is I always cut off my pencil mark just right on the pencil mark um, and then that's that's where it fits. So once your face fronts are done, your boards are done, then you can add some wood glue and then I just use my Brad nail gun um, in, with one and a half inch nails and I attached each one. If you don't use the glue, the shelf can 
wobble and make noise when you set stuff on it so make sure to use that wood glue um, it only takes a second um, and it really does add for a stronger shelf and more stability um, I made sure that my nail gun had the counter sink deep enough that I wouldn't have any nail heads popping um, I also decided to not um, I stained my shelves first and if you like this stained color I will put a link to the process for that in the description um, but I decided to not fill all the nail holes with wood putty or anything like that um, because they were so subtle and so tiny and it, it just added a slight rustic look if anyone even took a close-up look so for me um, staining the shelves in the garage was way easier so that's what I did um, I did decide to caulk the sides and back of each top of the shelves just so that I could have that nice smooth finish look but other than that um, I kind of did a more uh, raw finish So I gotta tell you, I loved this part of the process. I hated scribing, I hated all the cutting because I have two alcoves, um, on you know, one on each side of the fireplace and that was a lot of cutting, a lot of scribing. Um, it what I thought I could just cut some rectangular pieces of plywood and pop it in, no, not the case. So at this point, it was a ton of fun and it went really quickly. I numbered each board um, so the top shelf was one and then underneath was two and that's how I knew where to put them um, and staining them was much easier in the garage like I said I used a clamp to do the front bases you guys um, if you don't it, you, you know the that pine board can bow a little bit it can move on I just I wanted to leave a clamp to just give it that little extra help while the glue was drying essentially um, and you can see how it's coming together they're nice and sleek um, a really soft wood what like white oak color kind of um, anyways if you want some help styling your shelves go to my blog at www.804sycamore.com and when you subscribe to my blog you'll get my ebook for styling these shelves um, I have a great recipe so here's the before and then with all the shelves done, here's the after Christmas time, and I just love how they turned out. <laughs>